to World Tourism Day. Thank you. From the Secretary General, Zorab. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, please, can you put your hands together once again for the Honorable Commissioner? Thank you very much, ma'am. She, she ran into that name headlong. <laughs> Thank you very much. And um, she just... Um, she delivered the message from the UNWTO Secretary General. Thank you very much for that uh, um, address. Yes, um, members of the State Executive Council, particularly the Honorable Commissioner and the SA Terzim Atsun Kocha, um, will be going straight ahead now and already standing by to deliver his goodwill message, a bit virtually. I have um, the former Commissioner for Tourism in Lagos State. I'll be ceding the microphone to Dr. Franklin Adejumo, who will be addressing us from the virtual point. Please welcome Dr. Adejumo. Dr. Adejumo, over to you, sir. Dr. Adejuwa, please, you would have to unmute your mic. Dr. Adejuwa, please, you will have to unmute your mic, sir. Yes, it's all right now. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes, we can, doctor. Please go ahead. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Today, 27th of September, marks another World Tourism Day are set up by the United Nations uh, World Tourism Organization and approved uh, by the United Nations Organization. The idea of a World Tourism Day is identically and proudly who actually was the main pioneer of the tourism industry in Nigeria. He is the importance of the United Nations organization having a day assigned to the emerging economic sector at the World Tourism Organization General Assembly in the early 70s. I have deliberately alluded to the above instance to remind us that Nigeria could have been anything and everything in the realm of tourism development considering a serious and purposeful follow-up of our antecedent of most economic sectors and understanding it as such is most important. It encompasses the government, economic sector as the largest employer of labor worldwide and the largest owner of foreign exchange exceeding earning from petroleum. Benefits from the sector are immeasurable. Hence, prosperous countries take its development very serious, protect, and respect the sector. It is beyond entertainment and jamborees as often incinerated in the World Tourism Day in Lagos State. But this should not be by the lips only. Lagos State has been destined to be the vanguard of the sector's development in Nigeria. This position is not by default, but by reality of its natural endowments, historical positioning, physical geographical enrichment, and indeed as a gateway to our great country, Nigeria. When the trumpet sounds in Lagos, it is echoed all over the country. Lagos State was the first to establish a ministry for tourism. Lagos State was the first to put in, in place a tourism policy. Lagos State was the first to open up the development of tourism proper in the entire country. Though progress has been impaired and delayed, it is my strong belief that past can still be a challenge to the future and Lagos State will consequently bounce back to its leading role. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Worldwide, COVID-19 pandemic has had a huge impact on the sector, as the latest data shows about 65% drop in tourist international arrivals. But the sector is very resilient and already getting prepared to bounce back. I am also optimistic of the would-be wonderful fate of the sector under the present executive governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sawolu, once he is adequately advised. He has shown the trait in his wonderful handling of the pandemic and the steering of other critical challenges. It's indeed the right leadership we need to revive the sector at this time. Your Excellency, Governor Babajide Sawolu, Honorable Commissioner for Tourism, my colleagues in the industry, both within and outside government. While I want to wish you all a happy celebration, we can make it happen. I want to assure you during our time, let this be our resource, our responsibility, and our objective. Thank you all. I wish Lagos State a happy celebration. Thank you very much. The former commissioner, um, Dr. Franklin Adejumo, thank you. And um, the permanent secretary, Ministry of Tourism, Atson Kocha, thank you very much for being here this afternoon. Um, my assignment is almost done because I'm about to introduce the person who will be taking over this um, segment. And um, I want to particularly, before I leave the microphone, thank His Royal Majesty Oba um, Abduwasiu Omogbalahon Lawa. Um, just before we round up the discussions, Kabiesi will be addressing us. He, he's one of those that would um, get to us. But I'd like to recognize and hand over the microphone to an Abia State born but Lagos bred, Lagos ideology configurated, um, Lagos vision empowered gentleman who is an achiever in all ramifications. Now this man has been able to study though the sciences and foray into the tourism industry. And I make bold to say he has made a huge, huge landmark. And I know that his shoes are so big, nobody is even planning to fill those shoes in the nearest future, which tells me that he's going to live for a very long time. I like to let you know that this man championed the course of um, the tourism market, and he has done so well and established the fact that that particular industry is a viable alternative to oil revenue in this great country, Nigeria. I refer to him, you know, I never knew his full name. Whenever I see his picture, I'll just say, ah, okay, Akwaba is there. Akwaba is there. But thank goodness, the Honorable Commissioner and her ministry deemed it fit to have this virtual celebration of the World Tourism Day 2020. And to moderate the World Tourism Day 2020, I have the honor and privilege to cede the microphone to Stanley Ikechi Oko. Please could you put your hands together for him. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, she knows me all the way home. So I thank you. That was uh, beyond expectations anyway. When my yoga was talking, Dr. Dejuwa, because it was when he was commissioner of Home Affairs that we started. And uh, I followed him to Abuja too, when he was a minister. And he, he trained us. People don't know that he was the former president of Eftan. And when he was the president of Eftan, we are those waka pass that carry bag and follow him. So it's not surprising that today I'm a BOT member of Eftan. I'm supposed to have done three events by now. I have not done any. So we are happy that Lagos State Government has deemed it fit to bring practitioners, not only 
in Lagos together, but all over the country. I will want uh, my people to show. The president of EFTAN is on live. The chairman BOT, the president of NANTA, which is the National Association for Travel Agencies is on, Susan. The president of the top operators in Nigeria is on. The chairman BOT of NATOP is on. So the BOT members from Kano, from all over. So the whole country is with you, madam. The whole, that's the second deputy president of EFTAN, Badaki Aliu, joining from Abuja. We have, uh, yeah. So the whole country is hooked on this program today. So it's no more a Lagos affair because Lagos drives the engine. And as the chairman of Carnival Calabar, all the way from Calabar, Gay Bona, they have some partnership that was initiated by August Steve here. So we have, um, okay, the former United Nations, the beauty queen, Mrs. Tourism United Nation Ebele. So she's also a collaborator with the, and everybody that is in tourism in Nigeria today, every major player, I know other states are doing their own, but madam, that shows you the power of Lagos that everybody is hooked on to be with us today. Why this is going on, uh, we will go straight to what we are supposed to do now so that we can come to the panel. The first person we are going to bring, the theme for this year is tourism and rural development. And for rural development, most of the tourism assets are in the rural areas. Where the tourists go to is in the rural area. The owners of the assets belong to the rural area. The wealth of tourism should be in the rural area, not in the urban cities. But what normally happens is that the businessmen live in the cities. Then we take advantage of those people. So today, we are going to go to uh, Dayo, Ade Dayo, he's a world famous photographer. He's uh, an author of the most beautiful books on Nigeria. He's uh, someone who has created the biggest collection of images of Nigeria. If you want any picture of any location in Nigeria on tourism, uh, Dayo is the go to man. So, uh, we are going to look for Dayo at the Dayo. That's not Dayo. I saw him earlier. I saw Dayo earlier. Can you unmute the real Dayo? <laughs> this might be another Dayo at the Dayo, but that's not the, the one. We Antaiwo Oyeniyi from any uh, from Ikorodu should get ready because from Lagos, Lagos we divided them into five divisions. So from Lagos, we go to Ikorodu. From Ikorodu, we go to Ekwe. From Ekwe, we go to Badagri. We are going to fly around the different tourism attractions in Lagos today. So uh, which one of them is ready for us? Taiwo? OK, this is the original Dayo I know. So can you unmute him? <laughs> A round of applause for him. So unmute him. Dayo, tell us where you are and tell us what you're doing and how tourism has impacted the neighborhood. Introduce yourself, though I have done that. Happy Tourism Day. Uh, I'm very happy to be part of my Tourism Bridge. And the reason why I'm here is this is the this is one of the most significant places you have to visit in Nigeria. Why? The lagoon meets the Atlantic. And so this state actually is not the only confluence state we have in Nigeria. Lagos State can as well say they are a confluence state. I'm, I'm imagining myself having a glass wall over this crossing. And people walking across the glass to get onto the point where the Atlantic meets the lagoon. You can imagine the numbers of people that will be visiting this place every blessed day. And if we're saying we're putting tourism back into the, into the rural areas, into the local economy, 
I just cannot imagine the numbers of people that will be invited, that will be coming to this place, that will be employed just because of this confluence. And next to the confluence is the Lagos Yacht Club side over there. So you can see Lagos from where you can see some blocks rising up. But the main reason why I'm on the five carry bridge is because of the confluence. You can see the Atlantic Ocean to get to the Lagoon. But most times you will see the Lagoon flowing back into the Atlantic. I love the country a lot to give in terms of tourism. You go to Epe, a radio local government, where you have the largest monument in Africa, Shibuya located in the best place. Carbon dated over 2,000 years ago. Um, I mean, this beats me hollow. Not far away from here, just a walking distance, is the first state house built in Nigeria in 1869. Still standing, nothing has happened to it. The first stadium in Nigeria, the only first stadium, just a walking distance. I'm looking at the two of them as I am closely. And throughout Lagos Island as I am now, as so many historical relics. And if you see why Lagos, um, Victoria Island is called Island, from one of my images, surrounded by the lagoon, you will be amazed. So to me, in the next two to three years, I do not see most people traveling abroad because of the COVID pandemic. This is the time for us to look inward into Nigeria, to employ our people, and to beat down on the insecurity challenges we are having at the moment, and employment. We are looking for foreign direct country. The blacks are brought because in Nigeria is the largest black nation on earth. So also with the numbers of blacks in diaspora be from Nigeria. In Brazil, they speak Yoruba. In Cuba, they speak Yoruba. And Black Lives Matters. That is the campaign at the moment. That is the campaign at the moment. So imagine if we're able to unmask our tourism potentials, get our country going. Imagine the numbers of blacks that will be coming from abroad to join us. I just do not imagine again. Coming back to the conference, you have the Grand Canyon Skywalk in Arizona, America. Imagine the numbers of people that visit there. You go to the glass world, the longest in the world, in Quindian, in China, a lot of people go over there as well. And not to talk of the bush. I think your connection is having issues. Can you hear him? Okay, so we have to cut off Dio now. And we go to Ikorodu if he's okay. Can you locate Taiwo? Okay, he's back. Can we hear him? Okay, who can we get? Get on to Taiwo or Princess at Ekpe. Can we get Princess at Ekpe? Okay, Princess, they are going to unmute you now and you're going to tell us your own little story. So, unmute princess. We can't hear you, unmute yourself, yeah. Unmute your device, Princess. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. 
Yeah, good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Go ahead. Yes, all protocol duty observed. Right now, I'm in Oluwo Market, the fish hub of Lagos State in Ekpe. Can you hear me? Go ahead, go ahead. Hello? If I can't hear you, I'll tell you. Go ahead. Okay. As we all know that Ekpe is the fish hub of Lagos State, know that um, Ekpe is the fish hub of Lagos State. Ekpe is a vast land surrounded by water with different species. We have our mangrove forest and, uh, and we have lands. And we have so many untapped resources here in Ekpe. And um, <clears throat> being the World Tourist Day today, I want to say happy celebration to everyone. And at the same time, we are hoping that these untapped resources in Ekpe, something should be done. And to talk about... Um, Rural development and tourism and rural development is an approach of improvement. Tourism, for instance, has become a major source of transformation for a lot of communities, states, and countries. For a local government and community like Kekpe, our heritage, monuments, and resources are our, our, our community. And then, um, because tourism has all it takes to. Uh, to impact lives and um, to make um, our community a better and a great one. And being one of the division of Lagos State, I, I believe that um, we, we, we have a sellable source and we have so many things um, and we have all it takes to, to improve and to make uh, uh, to, uh, to boost our economic and IGR in Lagos State. Tourism is a sellable source for a given community to build human diversification, good structures, development, job creation, both directly and indirectly, education, community, health, and so on and so forth, which can make um, a community, a rural community, to be well developed and, um, and to make um, an impact in people's lives. Tourism is something we don't, we, we don't have to joke uh, or make, take with levity. Tourism is a very big source and is an, it, 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 it provides IGR for, for both local and um, state government as well. And all stakeholders, <laughs> all stakeholders that are into tourism. And um, to me, to me, I believe the most popular local government in, uh, in Lagos State Ekpe is one of them. Like uh, Mr. Didai has said, we have our monuments, we have the uh, Shuberedo, the first post office is in, is in Ekpe, and we have um, our slave trade uh, uh, market too in Ekpe here. And this fish market is one of the most popular markets in Lagos State. We have a unique thing that in this market, it's, it's only in, it's run by women alone, hundred percent, which I, which is which, which which is not a common or a, a common thing. But in Ekpe here, we have hundred percent women that are doing that are selling fish here, that are doing the fish business in Ekpe. And then um, we need, we believe, with if we can first lift this market, it will it, it, it improve our IGR and then to benefit all the all the indigents in Ekpe as well. Tourism is life, and tourism has all it takes to make our community, even Lagos State, grow better. Thank you. And thank you, celebration. thank you, Princess. That's wonderful. I like the fishmonger background with the ladies and uh, everybody there doing what they are doing, the business of yes, fishing. Sir. Now, there were yes. two operators in Ekpe yesterday. They took oh. tourists to Ekpe and they had problems yes, from yes. the locals. I said they should inform yes. you. When two operators... I, actually, bring... it, wasn't a big, it wasn't a big one. I, I, I actually settled it immediately. And these are part of what um, we need to do. We, we need to we need to there should be an orientation for people to know there should be a friendly um atmosphere for for the tourists to come to Ekpe. actually it's not in the main local government it's in the uh, my one of our lcdas here that is in, but it was something i quickly addressed and it has been solved thank you very much for that sir Th thank you for that intervention i i'm, I'm happy the locals should yes. know that tourism happens in the rural area so when you see tourists 
Even if they make an error, exactly. it, cover it, them up a little. To do Don't begin to harass. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. We'll go straight to Ikorodu. Is Taiwo ready for us? If not, can we go to Ekare? Who is ready? Taiwo or Ime? Ime, the vice, pre the vice president of NATOP. They are to, oh, what the top operators did yesterday was to do top packages to these destinations. So now there are tourists in these different destinations now. So they, we try to do that to mark the World Tourism Day. Who is ready? Ime? Okay, Taiwo. Okay, Madis can, can come on if she's there. Okay, put her on. Okay, what's up now, Ekare? Afternoon, go ahead. Actually, we are not in Ekare right now. We are still in a bear resort. Okay, go ahead. Good afternoon, everybody. With all due respect, we are right here at the Ebe Resort and Spa. This place is a a very beautiful environment. The, the resorts have a lot of amenities here. They are, you have the swimming pool right over there. We have the tennis courts. We have the restaurants. We even have a mini soccer in this place. And the, the resorts also have uh, a rooftop bar, which a lot of people come in there at night and to enjoy the scenery and the environment. This place is a very beautiful environment. It's so accessible. The rooms range are so affordable and everything here is so spectacular. So I would recommend a bear resort every day, every time, because this place is so absolutely breathtaking. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Can we go to Taiwo? I see that he's there. Taiwo, please put your name and your video so we can know you. When you don't have your name, there is no way we can identify you. If we are seeing Techno 240, we won't know. So I get okay, that. My name is Dear. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Can everybody hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, Taiwo. Go ahead. Tell us where yes. you are. At. Okay. My name is Taiwo Yeniyi. I'm presently at uh, Ikorodu, Ebute, Ipakodo. And specifically at Origin. I'm at Origin, Origin Gardens and Zoo. And And, uh, uh, coming in Taiwo, your connection is weak, so your video doesn't show. We'll this come place, back to I'm you. So excited Taiwo, Taiwo, we'll come back to you. So change your network while we we'll go to Badagri. So change your network and try again. We can hear you, but your video uh, link is not coming through. Can we go to Badagri, Jibola, Akwata, anybody that is on there? Can we see? I travels, I've seen him here. I thought I saw I travels, I saw Akwata. Okay, while we are there, I can see um, the BOT member from Kano, Aminu Agoha. Can he share a word with us? Alaji Aminu Agoha, that's the first man there. Can we go to him? Okay, Taiwo. Agoha, that's him there, yeah. Alaji Aminu. I know you are in Kano. Can you say something good to Lagos? Okay. Uh, Alaji, we can't. Okay. We can't hear you, Alaji. Sorry, we have to take you off. We can't hear you. Can we go to Tinuke? Al Madam Tinuke did a video about. Ikorodu. I remember her video about Ikorodu. She said she's from Ikorodu. 
She's a big lady with Nanta. Madam Tinuke, yeah, that's uh, hello. You. Okay, yes, madam. Yeah, hello. Happy Happy Tourism Day, everybody. Um, thanks so much, Ikechi. I mean, um, I'm so happy to be here with all the important personalities. It's been a fantastic journey um, since the lockdown, and I thank you and Niger Seven Wonders for bringing us the weekly webinars which took us all over Nigeria so we can experience the marvelous sights and sounds. And um, we can, it's a dawn of a new era for domestic tourism to push it into the fore. It is um, the dawn of a new Nigeria. And now all states are jostling to actually um, showcase the various tourist attractions, which is very good. The, I would say that the domestic tourism revolution has started and we need to keep up the tempo. There's definitely not go, no going back. We have a lot in Nigeria as uh, Dai has mentioned and the other speaker, and we need to tap all these resources. We need to get uh, people to come into Nigeria to see what we have to offer. Government through their respective, um, respective state tourism development boards must also work with the private sector to develop all the infrastructure when necessary. This to ensure that tourists will come in. The creative sector is bubbling everybody to EKHS, you've been ever so wonderful, and also to other stakeholders for your passion for the domestic tourism. Um, Nanta, FTAN, NTDC, Law Law, Outen, and NATO. And of course, our youth led by the social prefect. You've all been so fantastic to bring, to open our eyes and to bring out the beauty that is Nigeria. Thank you so much. Thank you, madam. Thank you, thank you. She did a wonderful video of herself as a Lagosian, a three minute video, and she showed all the wonderful places there are to see in Lagos. I love that video. Alaji Aminu, are you okay now? Yeah, he's unmuted, but I think his connection problem. Okay, we take Gabe or the other uh, F time people. So go to Gabe. While we are waiting for Taiwo to fix his stuff, I want to see the zoo in Ikorodu. I didn't know there was a zoo there. Okay, Gabe on a chairman, Carnival Commission. Calabar. Thank you very much, Mr. Ike Chuko. I'd like to say big kudos and commendations to the governor of Lagos State. Um, he's a man of the moment. He has taken a bold step in this great time for only overcomers. A goodwill message from Calabar, the home of Carnival Calabar. Goodwill message to World Tourism Day. And of course, goodwill message to the Akoba family and entire stakeholders of tourism in Nigeria, and often before now. But if we recall that Nigeria is being seen in the light of Lagos State, whatever happens in Lagos is what reverberates for Nigeria worldwide. With this great step being taken by His Excellency the Governor, I believe our morning is here. Not too long ago, I saw him playing football with a great lady, uh, Oshuola. I think that picture should hit um, all platforms. He's a man of many faces. This year, uh, World Tourism is being celebrated for rural communities, tourism and rural development. It brings us back to community-based tourism initiative. How do we engage the local people to find solace in this sector? How do we engage our youth to find solace in this sector? The basic icons of this sector, which is the plan, the product, and of course, marketing and promotions. With a huge market as we have in Nigeria, with a huge market as we have in, Nigeria, in Lagos itself, you can't ask for more. And I believe what the Lagos state government has done this year by taking the lead in this sector shows that we are about to conquer. You have the market already. 
you have the plan already and you have the product. What product do we have in, in Lagos? The mice, the meetings, events, conference, and um, exhibitions. You have it already. So we need to move. Your Excellency, I'd like to thank you and your wonderful team and uh, the commissioner that you engage somebody who is inside already, Akwaba. Akwaba, in spite of our modest effort in Calabar, you know, managing the carnival for nearly 15 years, engaging and collaborating with some of the world's foremost carnivals. It was Akwaba that took us to Brazil in 2018 for us to now begin to engage carnival for commercialization, carnival for mechanic presentation, which is the automation you see with, with the floats. There's so much in Lagos State. Is it the marine tourism? And of course, is it the people's tourism? They can do spirit. I believe with the SDGs today that formerly was MDGs, sustainability is about to be achieved. We will engage the rural communities to the deliberate plan that is laid out. I believe it is our money. And the PPP framework, tourism and government, the private sector and government, with the government providing the enabling uh, uh, environment, the private sector will run it for sustainability. I thank you for this great day, and I bring you great greetings from Carnival Calabar and His Excellency, the Governor of Kosovo State, who has taken our carnival to another height. Thank you. Thank you for that brotherly love. I know you and uh, the other people who work together and through the Brazilian Embassy. Lagos State also works with the Brazilian Embassy too. And uh, before we go to Susan, who is the president of the National Association of Travel Agencies, we want to go to Badagri. Is Jibola ready for us? These are some of the hot so, shots that are making Lagos work. I'm here, sir. Okay, go ahead, Jibola. <laughs> Hello? I know you're having a party. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Uh, it's a wonderful privilege to be, to be on the platform. I want to say a big thanks to our own Ambassador Ikechiku. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, Actually, uh, it's a wonderful thing that um, the domestic tourism is having a good trip. The COVID-19 has really been a blessing in disguise in the sense that it has now given us an opportunity to leverage more on domestic policy. And uh, with all testing from all land on deck, working and in hand, it's, it's getting more better day by day. Take for example, here in the Dagi, the Babai Stop Authority, the Dagi Local Government, Honorable uh, something about, uh, I thought about a wonderful uh, World Tourism Day together here. Sorry. Uh, can you hear me, sir? I can hear you. Uh, is a okay. there with you? I know you're having a party, World Tourism Day party. <laughs> Okay. So it, it, it's not it's not it's not on ground now. It, it's just oh. going to fix up one or two things. Oh, okay. We are going to leave you. You promised me that the water hazard was not coming back, but I can see it behind you. I can see it. <laughs> you told yes, they are all coming back right now. So you can see. It. So you, you said it that they will be coming. But when I saw you today, okay. I said, ah, Ogan said it too, and you are here. <laughs> But you had a, a bonfire so then, party in Badagri. You do that every weekend. Congratulations. Yes, we have to... so... Thank you. Very much. Okay, thank you, Jibola. Hello, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, sir. All right, so, um, like, like I was saying, in Badagri, the concept is changing beyond the history and stuff like that. But then, there's more to that. And um, during the um, Niger Seven Wonders um, series, where I have the opportunity to be, um, to be giving the audience to say something about Badagri, uh, the bonfire is, some, is a concept you love to experience in Badagri because and the, the security uh, processors in Badagri make it an, uh, an enabling environment to stay, to stay late. 
at night. And that's why we have some very nice um, um, places, like the Araka private beach. It's an ideal place you can have your bonfire night. So when you come over to Badagri, you escape from the stress of Lagos. You, you end your day near the beach, where you can hang around with some uh, wonderful uh, people to experience nice, nice life here in Badagri. And not only that, right now I'm on this floating, floating restaurant at Hotu Bar. So it's a place whereby you can enjoy the sunset and a lot of wonderful things. I mean, when you see the fishermen going for the fishing and other um, daily activities going on on the waterway. So the, 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 the nature in Badagri, Lake Lagoon, uh, is an ideal place for you to, to enjoy your time here in Badagri. And this is because the domestic tourism um, is now giving attention. And like I said, I really appreciate all the big daddies and mommies in the tourism industry who gave people like us opportunity to see tourism as the real, the real deal when it comes to um, part of Nigeria economy. So thank you very much, sir. I'm sorry I couldn't um, Yeah, thank you, thank you. A round of applause. I will join you in one of your bonfires because I see that. So this, I'll be, I'll be, I'll, I'll be happy to have you, sir. <laughs> okay. So this is the national president of the Nigerian Association of uh, Travel Agencies, Madam Susan Akwaraye, joining us all the way from Abuja. Madam, just share a little word with us on encouragement to Lagos State. Just say something. Oh, yes. Thank you so much, Ikechi, my brother. Um, congratulations, congratulations, congratulations again to Lagos State, to the Governor Sir, congratulations, to the Commissioner for Tourism, congratulations. I know what you have done with our people, F Stamp. The, the opportunity you gave the private sector in this industry to um, to look into the, um, the the master plan, and we made our input. So. Thank you so much for that. He just shows that the current leadership in Lagos State is ready and willing to give tourism 100%. Tourism, I dare say, can challenge oil. Can the kind of money and revenue that oil has been giving us, I dare say, because the land Nigeria has money. This is from my heart because I am so excited. What is happening now with our domestic tourism is a dream come true for me personally. When I came into office, we started a tourism challenge, and that was a video Ikechi was talking about that Madam Tinuke did a tourism challenge. Where every travel agency is supposed to do a two minutes video and tell us the tourist sites in your in your it made me fall in love with Lagos State all over again. Well, the private sector have been doing a lot over the years, a lot. But thank God we have states like Lagos State that is saying, Yes, we are ready. Let's push this together and work together. Thank you, everybody. And happy world tourism. They will once again. Thank you. All thank the way you. from Abuja. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Congratulations, thank everybody. Thank you. I think we'll take uh, Alaji Badaki Aliyu, second uh, national deputy president for FTAN. I saw him earlier. We showed him. So is Taiwo's uh, Taiwo's video ready? Okay, Alaji, Baraki. Okay. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, I wish to congratulate the executive governor of uh, Lagos State, the Honorable Commissioner herself, for a wonderful job they are doing in Lagos State. Um, for honorary Eftan especially the various visits that our members have done to her office. I congratulate all, and I wish everyone happy Tourism Day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Alaji. I know that I saw the okay. president of NATOP, Haji Abilikisu, 
Is she ready? If not, we'll go straight to, I saw Haji Abilikisu, BBOG, uh, Haji Abilikisu. If not, we'll go to Taiwo from Ikorodu. Because I see Taiwo said he's ready. So can we go to Taiwo while we are waiting for Haji to get back on? No video for, okay, that's Taiwo. Go ahead. Yes. Happy Tourism Day. Happy Tourism and, uh, Day. I want to do a stand on this. Um, I'm standing at the uh, audio in uh, Atebute Ikorodu. I'm not quite aware that Lagos State. And uh, coming through to this place at present, we have about species of animals, life animal here. We have seen the peacock, turtle. One is 91 years old. The male and the female is seven years old. We have African eagle, rock pattern, and hyena. They are all live and direct here. So at the beach side of the Buto Ekuru animals, as I'm just trying to move around with my video for you to catch a glimpse. So Ikorodu is a very peaceful place. Ikorodu used to be a farm settlement in the olden days. But what Ikorodu was about 10 years ago is no longer the same now. Because Ikorodu has become an emerging city and an emerging business attraction center. Because people flood into land environment for business. And therefore, tourism here, we have the baboon, the peacock, a lot of and also at this origin garden, we also have it. And I Okay, Taiwo, we have to leave you in a... a... No, that since tourism is a, it has brought about development to this environment, business has been traveling in Ikorodu due to tourism. And I know that, the, and also the business is increasing. Daily new business is coming. It's a wonderful place here. And the, see here, you can see. This is the African, African eagle. Here at my background, at the zoo. We have the bamboo too here at the zoo. So it's quite amazing that this place is very wonderful. Why? Look and grow. You can see the hyena. This is the hyena here. That is the hyena at the zoo. Very good network connectivity with other parts of Nigeria. Because from Ikorodu, you can access Ogun State, you can access some other states as well. And uh, the best origin, we are talking about where I am today, is a private or Taiwo, we are having problems staying with you. But thank you. At least now I know there is a zoo in uh, Ikorodu, and uh, I have good news for you. They will soon be there, and everybody will go to see the details from there. So we'll go to the Eftan. We go to and you can see the Eftan Southwest. The lagoon. Taiwo, we have to leave you. On the sea. So government. Okay. Thank you, Taiwo. Um, I know the effort you made to go to that uh, Epakudu and the, the zoo. Now I have learned something. There is a zoo in Ikorodu. So for those of you that say there is no place to go to in Lagos, that is, no, is not true. 
the young top operators are showing us there's a lot. Lagos has one of the best beach resorts in West Africa. Trust me if I say that. I've been to almost every country in West Africa. I've seen the beaches, and some of the beaches in Lagos are out of this world. So, uh, so when people tell you there is no place to go, you just ask them what do they want. Lagos has a wildlife park in the city. You know, Nairobi prides itself as the only city in the world with a national park. Lagos have a reserve in the heart of the city, Lake, uh, Lake Conservation Center. Not talking about the zoo. The waterfront and the beach line of Lagos is out of this world. And I know there are 10 uh, resorts that have very popular on there. I can see the president of South, uh, Southeast for Eftan, Madam Lolo. So can you just wave to us and say hi? Eftan is heavy today. Can you say something to us so that we'll go? Hello, Ambassador Ikechi. Um, good afternoon, uh, Honorable Commissioner. Um, greetings. I'm speaking to you from the beautiful city of Oweri. And she's a Lagosian. Uh, <laughs> I'm a Lagosian. I enjoy the hospitality of Lagos. And, um, but this is my home. It's very beautiful and uh, it's part of Nigeria. So we're all one. And um, thank you for what you're doing, uh, Honorable Commissioner. I greet you. I, um, I send greetings from the Commissioner here, Dor uh, Doris, who tells me she's a very good friend as well. Uh, in fact, she would have been here because I told her about this, um, this uh, thing that you put together. She, we had to postpone the one for Imo because there's another celebration happening today in Imo State, which is why she couldn't. Uh, Lagos is be here to join me so thank you very much everybody greetings to all of you and thank you ambassador ikechi for all that you do bye-bye thank you thank you I, I think we'll go straight to the panel it's already one o'clock i want us to round up early when the other people at the other places are ready they let us know so we can go straight to our discussion today um, we've heard people from the different locations. We've heard them talk about... Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Political... Yeah. The political head of the House Committee. Chairman House Committee, Lagos State Tourism. You know, there are three arms of government. And like former President Obasan just said, he says it's the house that he's a guy. So thank you. So today, uh, please, can we get a seat for this? Yeah. Today, we are going to go straight to the heart of the matter. Before people come to Lagos and go to other places for tourism, but in the last five years, Lagos became a destination on its own. Everybody that is going anywhere, all my friends in South Africa, all my friends in Kenya, all my friends in Ghana, my friend just got married sometimes before COVID. And what he told me is that his wife's uh, dream state, the place she wants to visit is Lagos. That she's been everywhere in the world, but she needs to come to Lagos. So Lagos became a powerful destination on its own. Aquaba has been benefited from being in Lagos. Lagos has all the billionaires. Lagos has all the major banks in Africa. Lagos has all the biggest entertainers in Africa. Lagos has all the Nollywood stars in Africa. So everything begins from Lagos. How did Lagos enable itself to begin to play this role? So we are going to look into that today. We'll go to the past, then we'll come to the future. So to go straight to the past, we have permanent secretaries that are here. We have permanent secretaries that are here and we have commissioners. Some are going to join us via Zoom. So we are going to start first from one of the 
former permanent secretary for the ministry. Uh, do we have uh, Fadikwe on? Do we have Fadikwe on? Okay, is he ready to start? You know, he's reading many books about tourism. So I want to start with him before I come to uh, Mayoga Shimi that is here. Okay, while we are waiting for Mayoga Fadikwe, I can go straight to... Uh, do you have a microphone there with you, sir? So you can switch it on. So let's talk about what did Lagos do in the past? What are the things that we had done to bring Lagos to where it is? I'll come back to you for the second round to tell us what we should do next. Because COVID kept everything on hold. So we need to reclaim the glory and move higher. So can you share with us some of the things that we had done? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator. I also want to seize this opportunity to thank uh, the Honorable Commissioner and the Special Advisor for extending invitation to me to uh, discuss my experience in the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture. I thank you. I, today, I feel very, very happy to be here because I feel like a father whose child he handed over his business to is doing better and is doing greater. So, it's, but notwithstanding, the son still needs the experience of the father to also put in one or two words. And I'm happy that so far, so good. Um, Lagos State has now gotten to a stage where we have uh, invested a lot in providing enabling environment for tourism to flourish. We have invested in security, and we have agencies of government that are security, uh, working on the security of Lagos State. We have also invested in safety. We have a safety commission that is also doing a lot of, on when it comes to safety. We have invested a lot on planning our infrastructure, in improving our infrastructure, because these are things that are related directly to the in tourism industry. We are also doing a lot when it comes to environment and uh, waste management, traffic management, transportation. All these are very, very essential if we are going to get it right in tourism, and government is the one that can actually do that. We are also trying as much as possible to uh, build our uh, hospitality industry. Uh, I am aware that the ministry is working on uh, doing uh, hotel grading, and so that uh, when, you, when you grade hotels, you can actually uh, know the quality of the, uh, the we can standardize our hotels. So I am happy about that. I'm also very happy to see that this, the current uh, 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 management of the ministry have established very good relationship with the stakeholders, the critical people, the private sector people who are supposed to be the drivers of this sector. Because without them, <laughs> there is practically nothing that uh, we, can, we can do. I'm also very happy that in terms of promotion, we, Lagos State has a very vibrant Ministry of uh, Information and has uh, so many agencies that can actually project uh, tourism that we can use to, for tourism promotion. So in those, in most of, the, I think we already have the foundation, but uh, what we need to now do to take it beyond what the management is currently doing when we get to that uh, uh, phase, I should be able to say one or two things that I believe uh, from experience could also assist us. But um, I, I follow the Instagram page of tourism and I see all the things that are being done. I follow the commissioner and I'm very happy and the special advisor. Um, there was one even one video I watched on the Instagram. The special advisor went to a particular uh, tourist uh, site, and I saw the hot-like uh, uh, structures that they put in place there, because we don't need to copy uh, uh, or that we need to 
do something unique that visitors will want to come and see. I don't want us to build a complete set category as a hotel or guest house. You can build hot, but modern hot that could be very, that could be an attraction on its own, apart from the fact that people are coming to watch our attraction. Those, some, those are those, some of these things we can build into, uh, uh, into, into our tourism industry. And uh, the commissioner is, is herself has done so many things involving, but we still need to involve all the agencies of government. And, and uh, maybe when the, the, the next phase of the discussion, which is the way forward and other things, other suggestions, I would like to uh, stop at this stage. Thank you, God bless you. Okay, thank you. I think we'll go, is uh, Ogafadi Kweon? Okay, I wanted to deal with the people that were there before. Uh... That's him. Okay, that's him. Okay, Oga, you can join us now. They will mute you. Okay, let's do it. Hey. Hello. Hello. Unmute your phone. Unmute your device yourself. I've done that. Hello. Hello. Okay, we can hear you now. Okay. Well, I thank Lagos State Government for this initiative and particularly His Excellency, the Governor of Lagos State, and also the Honorable Commissioner, Special Advisor and the Permanent Secretary for giving me this opportunity. I must say that this year's theme is very important for the development of uh, tourism. But what has gone in the past, let me make and highlight. Thanks to Dr. Franklin Dejuan in the 80s for what he has done to bring Lagos tourism to where it was as a then. And I have to also tell you that between 2008 and 2012, a lot of things were done under the leadership of uh, Governor Fashola and Senator Azukuyo, who was then the uh, commissioner, while I was the permanent secretary. What we did in 2000, uh, between 2008 and 2012 was that one, the ministry took decision to collect data on tourism potentials of the state. Two, the ministry began the with the creation of a tourism awareness and marketing of the of Lagos as a destination. This marketing was done in different places. Apart from within the locals, we also moved abroad. We went to several tourism fora to market Lagos as a destination. Then besides that, we also developed the Badagri Slave Group Project in line with the UNESCO proclamation. And the idea was to attract African in the diaspora, particularly the Africans in Brazil, the Africans in the uh, United States, um, also in England and a few other places to come and see what has happened to them as people in the past. And the, the state is enjoying that today. Again, the ministry also took a decision in San Philip, both Equay and Badagri Marina to develop holiday markets, although the project has been abandoned as of today. Then besides that, we also formulated policies on heritage sites and related matters, whereby we will not be just looking at our heritage site like that. If the House of Assembly pass a law grading the, the, various, uh, the various heritage sites into group one, two, and three, and these 
is on. And I must also let you know that besides that, we also do grading and classification of hotels. We come out with a lot of policies. Policies on a grading and classification. We revitalize the hotel licensing authority. And besides that, we also train staff because they are the human resources. Resources you cannot do tourism well. You can see that most countries that have developed is because they have a lot of human resources. Then between 2014 and 2019, I must say that a lot of things were also done to a 20 state uh, status on cultural tourism were developed by the past administration located in different parts of the state. And we also have four theaters in Lagos State. Besides that, the annual One Lagos Fiesta, now Greater Lagos, was also done, which also brought Lagos to limelight. I mean that, that regime, we had the ministry, the I mean the Council for Art and Culture merged with Ministry of Tourism and now become Lagos State Ministry of Tourism, Art and Culture, as we have it today. Besides, the administration also did a Lagos State Tourism Master Plan, although a lot of uh, issues were there because many communities were not involved in this master plan. And uh, what was even unfortunate was that it was an accountant, accounting firm that did the tourism master plan. So unfortunately, this is where we are. So I know that by the time you call me for the other section, which is the what can we do, I'll be able to give you more. Thank you very much for now. Thank you, boss. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, I know that you teach tourism now, and you have also given me some of your yes. books. Yeah, so thank you, sir. Yes. I will go straight to you, uh, Mr. Oga. Can I add uh, Chief Tansi to your title? <laughs> I want to call uh, Mr. Steve Ayorin, the, the former Commissioner of Tourism, to share with us uh, some of the things he, he believed that was done right. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Tourism himself. <laughs> and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, happy World Tourism Day. Uh, special greetings and regards to his Excellency the Governor and to the Honorable Commissioner, to the SA, to the Chairman House Committee on Tourism, and of course to our KBC, Oniru of Iruland. Um, in adding to that, let me commend uh, this initiative, especially for the Ministry and the two arrowheads in the Ministry, working in consonance with Mr. Tourism. I think this is fantastic. This is what Lagos is all about. So I say well done and thank you very much. I uh, appreciate this kind invitation. Uh, going straight to uh, what the moderator said about um, what took Lagos to this level. Um, I think it's a combination of things. Um, the two palm sex have you know, hinted on uh, the key institutional support that were given. Um, and I think that part of the reason why there has been so much vibe and positive noise about the state is because I believe that the state has been blessed um, with visionary uh, leaders right from 1999, especially when um, democracy returned. Uh, you recall, of course, that uh, the seeds to the positive vibe about Badagri 
part of it was soon during uh, during Ashwaju's you know uh, time. Uh, interestingly, two uh, great citizens of Badagri are here and with the ministry. Um, I think the Lord Lugard House uh, that was eventually turned to um, was it the Badagri uh, Museum or the Yes, exactly. Part of it was that um, um, the foresight that uh, the former governor Shwaju saw was to say, let us begin to use um, heritage sites well known before independence for something that everybody uh, can be proud of. Of course, the, the uh, administration of um, uh, BR, BRF you know, took it further um, the things that the former permanent secretary spoke about, the Badagri um, uh, Heritage Festival that got Professor Wale Shoinka involved, that got a lot of interest uh, in Badagri in particular, and of course in Lagos State in general. You know, a, a, a good load of it was done uh, during that era. Um, I recall the black uh, caucus of the of the... American Congress always looking forward uh, to coming as at that time. Um, so it has been improving from one administration to the other. Institutional support, good vibe, a kind of consciousness that says that yes, Lagos has always been the commercial nerve center of the country. Money was coming in, IGR was high. Um, also at the time, Lagos eventually developed oil but you had leaders who said in spite of Lagos being the commercial nerve center, in spite of the fact that Lagos could also take derivation from oil that has been discovered in the state, let the state be conscious of developing the new oil and gas in tourism and its creative energy. And I think that that has always played an important part. So there was a conscious effort to project the eco for show image of the state and when we had Banky W sang about um, uh, a no party like the Lagos party, we were projecting something to the whole world that um, um, if it's not in Lagos, the fund cannot be real. Uh, so when people came, either for businesses or for conferences or for trading or for, I mean, for anything, they saw an aspect of Lagos that was interesting. The traffic won't matter. You will find traffic anywhere in the big city, in Mumbai, in Sao Paulo, in London, in New York. But what was being communicated about Lagos was that you can do a lot more. And then it, the, the current governor and the, you know, his uh, predecessor have also done something um, very commendable. They have added tourism, art, culture, entertainment to the pillars upon which their administration, you know, for Governor Mbode stood and for Governor Sonwulu is standing. Uh, when people hear things like that um, outside of the states and especially outside of the country, uh, we send the right message, we send the right vibe uh, that these people are interested in harnessing what tourism stands for and in using um, what God has blessed the state with, the creative energy of that enterprising sector to drive people to appreciate uh, tourism better. So I will say essentially that it's been about the good vibe. It's been about the investment in infrastructural development that has been consistent over 20 years. It's also been about the fact that um, information machinery has been positively deployed into selling and marketing brand Lagos as an entertaining, as a fun, loving state. Um, in the last 10 years, especially, and possibly in the last five years in particular, uh, there have also been a conscious attempt to dot the lines to, you know, to participate in global events that matter. Global events that when people, you know, things that encourage the recall capacity of the state. At Cannes Film Festival, Lagos was there. What tourism market Lagos has been there, you know, previously. Um, the biggest carnival in the UK, which is the second biggest in the world, Notting Hill Carnival, there was a synergy in using that to celebrate Lagos at 50. 
and Lagos at 50 in particular was celebrated as a cultural event with a lot of documentation, etc., that went far in telling people that you might have heard different things about the state and you will encounter the issues that um, big mega cities <clears throat> deal with. But when you come, there will always be a reason to want to return. And before I round off, I'll quickly use about two or three examples of um, the sort of global acknowledgement that happened, particularly in 2018. Um, the MasterCard World Destination Cities listed Lagos as number one in the south of Sahara. And I believe that will be about the first time that happened because of the culmination of the things that have been happening. Don't, don't forget the fact that BRF administration was very high at that point on MICE, the Egberti, you know, conferences, etc. They When people come, they have a feeling that, oh, I don't just have to be here for conference. I can see Nikayat Gallery. I can spend the time in Badagri. Epe became, you know, um, a destination. So there were reasons. And then, so, when Lagos was eventually listed in 2018 as the number one in terms of destination in the south of Sahara, that was a major acknowledgement that we would need to build on. Secondly, um, in March of 2018, Daily Mail of the UK published an article to say that Lagos and Nairobi at that time became the most search for British nationals looking for where to go in summer outside of their usual destinations. There must be a reason why a Lagos will come up high on the list. It's because everything adds up. It doesn't happen in one year. It doesn't happen in, in two years. Uh, the good seeds that had been sown from 1999 till about 20, 2008, 2012 that uh, 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 Fadikpe mentioned, till about the four years of, you know, uh, Ambody coming to, you know, the consistency that this president's administration as shown in upping the ante, those are the sort of things that count for the good vibes that the states, you know, uh, uh, get. After the last administration left, and this new administration also came in with a strong message that tourism, entertainment, arts will continue to be a pillar in the administration of, you know, uh, in the current administration. That also sent a strong vibe, you know, uh, to the world. And three months after the advent of the administration, um, the CNN listing put Lagos as number one um, artistic town. You know, they look for locations all over the world. The coolest number, city. The coolest city in the world. Number three in the world. Number one in Africa. Because everything coalesced into saying that if you look at, and the area they focused on uh, was the Marina Onikon Arts Art District, Freedom Park, uh, City Mall, Muzon Center. You know, the mere fact that a city can think of allowing and sustaining um, a district for arts and culture and tourism to thrive. And I think that that's a major thing uh, that we have achieved. Uh, the vibe has always been good. Uh, we must never apologize for being who we are and what Lagos has always been. You may say loud, but loud for a reason loud for a purpose and of course as we have always said it is a call for show a no party like the lagos party that's part of it well done well done well done and and he said something and what he said is evident here he says that lagos has grown consistently from 1999 there is a handover and consistent and seated here today is an evidence madam commissioner congratulations you have shown that that vision is real. You brought a commissioner from another administration, FAMSEC from another administration, and you get them together. So that's why Lagos has that advantage. So now you've talked about the coolest city in the world. I have a radical idea. I hope I won't get thrown out of this place after I said it. <laughs> Oniko, with the Things that are in Oniko, it is rated as the coolest district in the world for the simple fact, music center, national museum, 
City Mall, Freedom Park, Tennis Court, um, the swimming pool. J.K. Randall is coming. So my suggestion for Lagos, no cars are allowed in that neighborhood. It should be pedestrian only. So that's my suggestion. So, <laughs> um, I, yeah, before I come back to Madam, yeah, before I come back to Madam to put together everything, I go back to them again. I said, what should Lagos do? You will be the last to tell us how this whole vision, but I'll start with, uh, hmm? oh, oh, please, can we find His Majesty? We need to hear from him. His Royal Majesty, he has been on with us since. Okay, why we are waiting for him? Okay, yeah. Your cabbie is here. Madam, he's on. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. The Mr. Governor, Mr. Babat Jide Olushla Sonwolu, the Governor of Lagos State, the Honorable Commissioner for Tourism and Culture, my sister, the former Honorable Commissioner for Tourism, my friend, my brother, Mr. Steve Ayonde, the Special Advisor to the Governor of Tourism, uh, Mr. Bono. The panel and distinguished uh, audience. Um, I'm very, very happy for this program. Uh, um, the, the nearest kid on the block in terms of tourism. And I'm happy uh, Steve Ayori they was able to to do a lot of work in terms of what the uh, what Mr. What I should well have made to know started in 1999 with the Black Heritage Program, which I was part at least as as an aid to a charge well made to know. And uh, at that period, we used to have the Black Heritage Program at the festival at the the Badagri, and uh, we, we have had a lot of uh, uh, the Congress, we call them Black uh, has done a lot. A lot has been done in the tourism space. And uh, we all, that's what I want us to look into. There's so many traditional rights and culture that we must always look out for. For Lagos State, we, a lot is, is being done, is being put in place to ensure that uh, all is uh, well in terms of tourism. The what we call Isheshe Day, always on the 20th of August. We, we need to let Isheshe Day be, be known to the, the, the world. Isheshe Day is a good opportunity for us to showcase the the culture and tradition of Lagos or, or your balance to the entire world. And uh, it is based on this that I want us to see how Lagos they can continue to do well in the in the tourism space. Uh, no one spoke to the I'm sure the other in in terms of the Mr. Ambo, this setup, the, we go under the flyovers, uh, Siva Yorinde and the other commissioner, we were all colleagues under Mr. Ambo, and uh, we, we started a lot of uh, uh, murals, like pictures of 
good sight for people to see. Because uh, we, as, as a state, landmass, land but in terms of population, we are, we are number one in Lagos, in Nigeria. And uh, I'm, I'm of a strong opinion that we should, we should scale that up so that Sundays, Saturdays, people can go out to see all those uh, sites uh, from the murals under the flyovers to different uh, traditional and cultural sites. That said, uh, as, as a stakeholder, I would want the Ministry of Tourism and Culture to consider the traditional institutions as, uh, as major stakeholders in, in, the, in the tourism space. But you, you, need to, you need to support in terms of giving uh, financial support especially to institutional institutions so that they can all they can also see that oh we have these sites that should be should be uh should should, should be taught in terms of uh, uh, uh tourism in in Ireland, we on assumption of uh, on ascension to the throne uh, we, I decided to do an enumeration of all the, all the, the, the hotels and restaurants, and uh, from that I was able to see that uh, a, a sizable percentage of uh, hotels and restaurants are located in the kingdom, and. Uh, a number of conferences, yearly conferences, usually happen within the kingdom, from Federal Palace Hotel to Eco Hotel, down to Landmark. And that is why we, as a matter of urgency, decided to focus on tourism. We also, we are also blessed with the, with the, with the Atlantic Ocean, the, the beach. And uh, those are good tourist sites that should be encouraged and for people to even see. Forgetting about the, the pandemic that has really uh, affected tourism in, in negatively, precisely, be able to, to see what we have in, in terms of our, our site. And uh, that is why, as a matter of urgency, the the kingdom and or the palace precise as part of our legit uh, uh, program legit is the acronym for let's grow we will learn together and uh, we as as the traditional institution and the, the palace we are working seriously to ensuring that we have uh, a museum we have uh, a Roland uh, museum uh, 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 program with that Irulan Museum pro, uh, site, we envision that uh, we will have like four floors. The first floor will sit to the Yoruba, uh, the the Yoruba floor, where all the traditional institution, the monarchs will come and see what we have in the with in in uh, in in the land. The the all the Yoruba uh, traditional rulers, the, the different sites will be located, will be cited in the in, in our museum. We also have the African uh, African floor, where all the uh, Africa a lot of uh, African uh, uh, sites or African uh, heritage will also be placed there. Then the top floor will be like the the, the European and the global site. With that, we will want to encourage countries, states, to have a, 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 a whether a floor or a a, a a a site where whenever they come to our Irulan Museum, they will see their own. Uh, uh, ancestral uh, uh, 
uh, all day at their history. It's going to be like a research and development center. If you want to come in, you can research oh, what is happening in Monaco. You know, you, you Google the king of Monaco, the first king of Monaco, the, 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 the last king of Monaco. And whenever those people come into the Euro Museum, they will be able to trace their history back to where, where they, 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 they came from. So that is what we want to do. And I believe we cannot do it alone. We need all these major stakeholders. We need the tourism industry. Uh, I listen to the, the, the national president of the, the, the ticketing or whatever, the, the lady that spoke from Abuja and how COVID-19 has impacted negatively, negatively on their, their business. But tourist, a tour and guard is also one area that we want to see how a lot of people can benefit from. And uh, Mr. Steve Ayori also spoke to that. Whenever you come to conferences here, whether it be it in Betty or Kuramo uh, conference, you come around from Iroland or from the palace, we can take you to Badagri on the water. You know, we can take you into Lagos Island. We will take you to Igadu Gono for you to see what Lagos has in terms of tradition and culture. With that, it's not just coming for the conference. You also have the opportunity of even eating from from our restaurant. You go to all the major restaurants we have within Iroland, even within uh, the, the, the many uh, restaurants precisely cannibal whenever you are in, in Kenya people will always want you to visit cannibal that's where you eat meat and uh, if you go to Barcelona other places if you go to Philippines you from uh, Manila to Kagana Dioro in the uh, outside of Manila, about two hours on flight to Man in, in from Manila. There are so many sites that you will be able to see. And that is what we want to do in Rulan. And we will be working with Ministry of Tourism and uh, Culture to see how we can promote the, 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 the tourism uh, uh, sector in Lagos and in Nigeria. We, we cannot do it alone. We will need all the stakeholder support. And we have started. And I want to, on this note, thank the, the governor of Lagos State for supporting this initiative. This World Tourism Day is very important and is very commendable. And uh, as far as we are concerned from the Euro Kingdom, we want to assure everyone that uh, we, are, we are in. We will continue to support the initiatives of the, the government of Lagos State and indeed Nigeria. And uh, the team's agenda already spoke to, to this. Is, is about is one of the major pillars of uh, of team's agenda, and uh, on our part, we will continue to support the government. We will continue to follow whatever the government has directed us to do. But with our own ideas and initiatives, we will see how tourism can create a lot of jobs. Because if you go to so many other places, you see a lot of tour guards working. Go to Israel. Go to Egypt. Go to Where anywhere, even in historical sites that they always want you to, 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 to visit. And uh, it's not only about the conferences or the, the schools that you attend, but the, 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 the historical sites which we have in abundance in, in, in Lagos and in Nigeria. So based on that, I want to commend the Honorable Commissioner for Tourism and Culture and the Special Advisor, uh, my former colleagues. I'm very happy with, with this. Uh, webinar is very commendable and uh, I want to give you the assurance of the, from the palace of uh, Oniru that uh, whenever I'm called upon to see that we promote tourism because we, that tourism has a lot of potentials to create jobs and uh, on my part and on the part of other traditional uh, uh, rulers in Lagos I want to let you know that we are at Chova already we are, we are laser focused on tourism. Uh, to all the other participants, thank you for all the contributions. I listened uh, attentively and um, I jotted down some points and I want to assure you that I'll always get back to you. To see if I already Mr. Senator Fukuyomi is also online and uh, we, we want to commend all the efforts of the past commissioners, the permanent secretaries and the governors of Lagos State from 1999 that have um, contributed to the tourism uh, 
a setup in Lagos and in Nigeria. On my part, thank you very much for inviting me. I'm very, very happy about this program. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Royal Majesty. And you could see we got educated. Uh, it was supposed to be a good view message, but it has become a major presentation. I like legit. Let us go to Iru Iruland together. That's, that's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's amazing. And you, you see everything that really happens in Lagos is in Iruland now. The landmark, everything that we call Victoria Land is actually actually in Iruland. Your Majesty, we thank you for that. And I, I know that uh, by the time you finish with what you have you're planning to do, it will be something bigger than the coolest district in the world. And Lagos will be home to so many other things. Maybe the entertainment capital of the world will be in Iruland. So we've heard from the royal father. We also need to hear from the, the Lagos State House of Assembly. He has a message from us, the House Committee uh, Chairman on Tourism. Sir. The governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Olushola Sonwulu, in absentia. The Honorable Commissioner, Ministry of Tourism, Art and Culture, Mrs. Uzamat Akimbule Yusuf. Welcome. The Special Advisor on Tourism, Mr. Abunu. Welcome. The former Commissioner, Mr. Chief Steve Ayorinde, is a Royal Majesty. Thank you for joining us on Zoom. Invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am glad to welcome you all to this occasion of the 2020 edition of the World Tourism Day, which is also being hosted in Djibouti, Addis Ababa, and in other cities across the globe with the term tourism and rural development. During this event, people will celebrate the unique role that tourism plays in providing opportunity outside of big city and preserving cultural and natural heritage around the world. This year's observation of the International Day has come at a critical moment when countries around the world look up to tourism to keep the cities and town alive, engineering recovery, including rural communities where the sector is being leading employer and economic pillar, providing job and opportunity most notably for women and youth development. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please be informed that it is estimated that by 2050, 68% of the world population will live in urban areas, while 80% of those currently living in, in extremely poverty will as well live outside of town and cities. Tourism is a lifeline offering young people the chance to earn living without having to migrate either within their home countries or abroad. It is in this vein that our Hamiebu governor, Mr. Babajide Olushola Sonwulu, has made tourism development one of the cardinal project for the economic growth in Lagos State. Once again, it should be noted that World Tourism Day 2020 will once again be celebrated by United Nations World Trade Organization member. States in our globe region, as well as the cities and other destinations 
by private sector organization and individual tourists and in Nigeria, particularly here in Lagos State. We join Global Region in celebrating World Tourism Day 2020. It is unfortunate that tourism has provided 80% job opportunities for the young and old. It is now among the hardest eats of all sector by the COVID-19 pandemic. No country has been unaffected. Restriction on travel and a sudden drop in consumer demand have led to an unprecedented fall in the international tourism number which in turn have led to economy and job losses. Women, youth, and workers in the former economy are most at risk from tourism sector job losses and business closure due to the pandemic, with 90% of world heritage site closed as a result of the pandemic, humanity, culture, cultural heritage, is at risk in all parts of the world. Therefore, governments, organizations, and interested individuals should put machinery in motion to revive the tourism sector in order to boost the global economy and provide jobs for the people. On our own part, as lawmakers, the Lagos State House of Assembly will be willing, if there is need, to effect any review of the law on tourism to attract investors as well as improve business opportunity in the sector. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on this World Tourism Day, the COVID-19 pandemic represents an opportunity to rethink the future of the tourism sector, including its contribute to the sustainable development goal through its social, cultural, political, and economic value. Tourism can eventually help us move beyond the pandemic by bringing people together and promoting solidarities within the aim of pulling crucial ingredients in advancing the, globe, the global cooperation so urgently needed at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That is from the Lagos State House of Assembly. In Lagos, like, uh, my brother said, everybody works to make sure that the vision comes to pass. And you could see the succession over the time and the collaboration, Royal Father, House of Assembly, and the Executive Arm. No wonder Lagos leads. Echo for sure. I, <laughs> I want us to quickly run through recommendations so that the Honorable Minister, uh, Honorable Commissioner, my bad. <laughs> Honorable Commissioner will tell us where we are going. So, uh, Mr. Shimi, very quickly tell us what you think we should do so that we go straight to the point. Yes, um, basically, my focus will be on uh, the governance structure that I believe will assist us in driving uh, the change that we desire. And I want to believe that tourism is a very huge industry because, like I mentioned, there are several agencies of government, almost all agencies of government have their role to play uh, uh, in building the tourism industry. And uh, we also have private sector uh, participants who are the key people who will now drive uh, the, the sector. So we, I want to believe that the best structure for and it's for the Ministry of Tourism and Culture to assume the coordination of all this huge, this huge industry. And assuming uh, coordinating means that you monitor all, everything, all the uh, tourism sites and all the tourism events on a daily basis. You monitor and evaluate the progress on all of them. That's number one. You also ensure that uh, um, whatever government is doing, uh, you want to see that the, whether it's government agency or uh, private sector, uh, you are monitoring, even federal government agencies are also involved because you also have to work with the immigration. People are coming for, to Lagos from outside the country. You want to ensure that they get the best 
Because one, some of the things that can actually discourage people from coming in could be people who are not even legal state uh, officials, who are, but who have to also interface with uh, tourists coming in, into, into Lagos. So we, we need to, it's huge. So we need to have a structure that focuses on coordination, monitoring and evaluation, and impact studies of, of, uh, uh, of government interventions. Then we also need to ensure that we create agencies of government to deliver service, anything that has to do with providing service, entertainment and everything, uh, liaising with film industry, liaising with the arts and culture people, liaising to our, with our heritage sites. We have agencies of government that are doing that. But the ministry coordinates and ensure that, uh, that when you monitor and it's like a dashboard, you create a dashboard in the ministry. And once you create that dashboard, you, are, you can actually see everything that is going on at all the time. So if there are problems anywhere, you, 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 are, you are in the position to know where the problem is. And I want to believe that His Excellency, Mr. Governor, will, uh, Mr. Governor will provide the necessary support for the ministry, because this is a major uh, uh, policy intervention of, the, of this present administration in providing, allocating resources to key, area, we have problem areas. So the ministry should be in that. So when problems are detected, they also have the, apart from financial resources, even government resources, even re review of regulations and all those things to make things easy for the operators to, 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 to flourish for, this, for, this, for the system to grow. Then also I want to mention that uh, we need we, a lot of zone during the Lagos are 50 events. And if you can actually, should do a documentary on that, on that, uh, on that uh, almost a year long, because it was all of the state executive council that worked on Lagos at 50 and private sector, uh, with a lot of private sector participation. So, and so many things were highlighted about Lagos State during that uh, one year long, uh, in all the uh, divisions of Lagos State. So we need a documentary like that to actually help us to, to promote uh, Lagos. And uh, lastly, I also want to say that we may not necessarily need to, we will need to definitely, with what I've suggested in terms of governance structure, we need to definitely uh, maybe reorganize the ministry in such a way that the, 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 we have three key departments, the ones that are ensuring that we have the necessary environment, creating the necessary environment and infrastructure, the ones that are monitoring all the events, whether it's not being done by government and the uh, private sector, the ones that are interested in tourism promotion. So when you monitor all this big time on everyday basis and allocate resources where the, you need to do intervention, you will be able to drive that sector uh, to, to, to a higher height. And, and you, we don't need to use... Um, most of the time we want to use people, uh, consultants. Sincerely speaking, some of us that the Gossip government will spend a lot of money on us, training us, exposing us. We could also do almost all these things with at no cost to, to legal states. It, because, we, 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 because if you're not, we can, for instance, I worked in the management services department of Lagos State for it, and we're the one creating departments. So we could actually create departments. And we also have a department in Lagos State that does that. That is uh, the Office of Transformation and Innovation and Creativity. I believe that they have the necessary where we do. And with, even if they want people like us to join them, we should be able to join them free of charge because Lagos State has invested a lot, particularly in me. And I feel happy today that I'm being asked to come back and also share my experiences. So, so I want to thank the commissioner, the special advisor, and uh, the management of the Ministry of Tourism for uh, the minute fee to ask me to come and make my contribution. So I thank you. Or God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, we have just 10 minutes left. So 10, 15 minutes left. So Essay, could you say something before... We we'll go to uh, Mr. Steve to give us his own. Okay. Uh, you can sit if you like. No, let me stand. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, the Honorable Commissioner, uh, the House Committee Chairman, 
um, the former commissioner, the PS, I have to thank you. Um, Ministry of Tourism, um, let me say a big thank you to my commissioner. We are the uh, policy uh, uh, maker. We formulate the policies. Um, but by and large, let me give it back to the ministry for this uh, wonderful uh, organization. Having said that, um, but I agree able to be one of the uh, most uh, tourist, uh, tourism destination in Africa to see. But today, tourism in Badagri is dying. The roads are not good, very bad. And today, you can't go to Badagri and see any tourist. They're not coming there to do anything. Because if you want to drive from here to Badagri, you spend about five hours on the road. Another thing is the issue of police on that road. It's killing. I'm using this medium to appeal to the federal government. Every five, five meters, you see police checking. We don't know. Federal government have banned uh, um, smuggling into the, into the country. And I don't think we have such on that road. But I don't know what police are doing on that road to, to that. If you go just five, five minutes, you see them. People are crying on that road. Today, if you ride on that Badagri road, you can't, you'll regret your life. And it's killing business at that corridor. So we need the intervention of the federal government. I believe the, 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 the governor of Lagos State is on, on the neck of federal government to do something on, on that road. If federal government is not willing, they can as well hand it over back to Lagos, which we are ready to, to, to take over. Um, having said that, uh, today's um, a topic is uh, uh, tourism and rural development. Sometimes ago, I tried to engage Mr. Governor that, look, let us look back to our rural development communities. Because the more you pay much attention to cities, people will migrate. And the more people migrate to the city, the more traffic jams. So Mr. Governor was asking me, what can we do? And sir, this is an opportunity for you to open up. If you go to Badagri today and some other area like Ekpe, there are some um, tourism destination that they've not set their eyes on electrification. And those things make them to migrate. So Mr. Governor, you can as well use today as a platform. And about 42 villages in Badagri have been highlighted for rural electrification by the Mr. Governor. Can you please clap for Mr. Governor? <laughs> so having said that, I uh, have to thank you, Mr. Nkechi, Mr. Akwaba, Ekava, right? Akwaba, Ekava. May God bless you for this wonderful uh, event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, well done. When you started with uh, talking about, I said, ah, this man is from Badagri. Is he criticizing his own? <laughs> but you, you got us there. And I can tell you that one of the biggest turn off is the checkpoint. The roads, most roads in Nigeria have issues, but bad roads with checkpoints in Nossiatin. So uh, I know Senator Fiki Omi joined us. Is he on? So he can just share with us before we go to uh, Mr. Steve. Everybody talked about, uh, Fadikwe talked about him. So, okay, while we are waiting for Senator Fiki Omi, can we hear from uh, August Steve on what you think Lagos should do? I think we could also speed it up. Yeah. Okay, um, thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Uko. Um, I think uh, the direction to look really is the direction of... Um, harvesting and distilling the huge um, ideas that um, commendably the Honorable Commissioner has shared over the last few months with the stakeholders. I, I think it is commendable uh, because what I, um, 
what I deduce from what she has been able to do together with the uh, essay and the PAMSEC is using the lockdown and the slow activities of the pandemic era to engage. And I think that in meeting different uh, levels of stakeholders, uh, various ideas have been shared. Uh, so I think that it will be strategically important to distill and harvest, you know, uh, that. Having said that, um, my key advice will be to approach the next um, post-pandemic era on two levels. And I'll say the first 15 months and the next 12 months. The, fifth, the first 15 months being from October till the end of 2021, which um, will rest for me on two legs. One is the possibility of pandemic being eradicated totally, or as we fear, as they are saying in Europe and a bit of Amer you know, some parts of America, that maybe a second wave or a third wave um, could come. If they do, it means that in the next 15 months, we will have to manage to continue in the manner that we have been doing. Um, um, a combo of the physical and the virtual in most of the things that we are doing so that we'll be able to say to the virus that we are stronger, that the virus cannot defeat us. The next 12 months will even be more important because the likelihood that the pandemic will have been defeated either through vaccination or whatever, or herd immunity, uh, is because that will be the last full year before the elections and before the primaries. And let's be practical, that will be one of the most important, you know, um, um, years, if not perhaps the most important before the primaries at the end of 2022 and the elections early in 2023. So therefore I say the first 15 months and then the next, you know, 12 months. Let's therefore focus whether the pandemic disappears or not, or we manage to deal with it as we are doing. Let's focus on domestic tourism. That is key, that is important, so that um, um, we devote our energies, our interests, our investments to making sure if, if the old idea before pandemic was that Lagos was recording <clears throat> between 1.9 million, three point something footfall into the state, using the airports, you know, et cetera. Let us first and foremost retain that. Even if people are not coming as they will come from outside of the country, let's replace those that will be losing with domestic, you know, tourists. And probably, probably then double the figure of those who come to Lagos. So cultivating fresh tourists um, locally, domestically, and regionally, for me, will be an important thing to do. Infrastructurally, um, um, the area to look, even in, in, in focusing on the domestic tourism, will be in the reviewed master plan that you have done. And thankfully, uh, FTAN that you are collaborating well, you know, beautifully well with, you know, have condensed uh, the master plan uh, from the reports that we have read. Uh, let us, in the first 15 months that um, I mentioned, let us speak a thing or two that will be visible that government, you know, can, that will be a deliverable of the master plan, apart from, you know, continuing with what has been done, et cetera. Let's be able to point at, at the end of uh, 2021, that oh, we started this project, we did this based on the recommendations of the master plan, and as it will assist with domestic tourism. I think uh, um, the Honorable Commissioner has hinted that the J.K. Randu Center uh, will be finished. Uh, I think that that would be a beautiful thing. Uh, whether tourists come from elsewhere or from here, uh, that would be an important edifice that to speak to uh, the interest of Lagos as far as tourism uh, uh, is concerned. Uh, and therefore, uh, the events that the state has always been part of, either directly or indirectly, the next 15 months should tell us that let us do more. Focus locally, but of course, uh, blew it globally so that people know that something's happening. And I'm happy uh, the Honorable Commissioner showed me something that uh, the Ministry and the State is collaborating with in celebrating Nigeria at 60. So that actually um, uh, puts a start to 
the beginning of that, you know, next 15 months. Don't let us also drop the ball um, for the Greater Lagos Fiesta. Um, we should take a good example from what uh, the African Union did on African Day. I think that was May 27th when he had a beautiful virtual event all over, all over Africa. And I think one of the events, um, a global events, one of the award ceremonies that was, um, uh, Mr. Lade, you mentioned that event uh, that was so beautiful that was done, one of the awards, Emmy Awards, you know, it was virtual. But of course, if you are watching it from your home, you are seeing a beautiful thing that was curated. Thankfully, uh, Lagos State through the ministry tried that successfully during Salah. And I think that should be the direction that we are going uh, so that we do not um, kill the, the entertainment part of it. Um, the things that you are doing with Heftan and all the other stakeholders are important. Uh, one area that we should collaborate with uh, that uh, uh, association key stakeholder is in developing tour guides. That's a major area where we're lacking. Who are the young people that we are raising to tell the story of Lagos, to sell Lagos as tour guides, to even Lagosians, before we start talking of non-Lagosians and outsiders. It will be important to collaborate. Maybe it will be with the, is it Nihoto or which of the schools that, yes, you know, uh, uh, more tour guides, more young people who understand Lagos and who can make careers out of that, you know, should be developed. Lastly, from my end, uh, one beautiful thing that came out of the, pandemic thing was the fact that the ministry uh, through the HC succeeded in getting Mr. Governor to release, to promise a billion Naira through the um, uh, empowerment fund. I think that is important. And if the industry will be lucky, let it also continue for next year and possibly the following year. So that those who have lost a lot of money and entrepreneurs in the sector, in the hospitality sector, in the tourism sector, in tour guides, in, in traveling sector, who require finance and assistance to come back, will have something to fall back on. If issues of taxes, registrations, organizations are part of the things that are slowing them down, let uh, the necessary um, agencies of government or departments in the ministry work with them so that uh, we don't get to a point that people are saying that, oh, the one billion is audio money. Let us take it from one billion to two next year, you know, et cetera, and support that sector, which Lagos State should be the new oil and gas sector. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was, that was a very good one. And it's like he did it casually, but he has just given you his own uh, paper on the pathway. Uh, we forgot to wish... Dr. Adejunwo, happy birthday. He's 77 years today. And, uh, and you could see World Tourism Day. He was born on that day. So, <laughs> yeah. And uh, while we are going on, the uh, head coordinator for EFTAN Lagos uh, joined us. Simone, you are welcome. And members of the, yeah, EFTAN in Lagos, you are welcome. So, uh, we'll take uh, Fadipe, then Madame will round up. Uh, could we go straight to Fadipe? So that we just... Okay, sir. Could you quickly run through your point so that uh, we can round up? We have overshot by 10 minutes. On mute team. I can't hear him. Sir, you can talk. On mute your device. Think he's freezing. Okay. Uh, we'll come back to him. Uh, let's hear from the Honorable Commissioner. You've heard the past, you've heard the present, and they've projected for you the future. So can you tell us what to expect? 
let me first and foremost appreciate everyone that has contributed, all the panelists, both within and on the virtual presentation. I sincerely appreciate you all. God bless you. Today, indeed, is a great day for me. One of my friends will say, I have my happiest day today. So I think I'm very, very happy, and the celebration is worthwhile because we are now thinking to the future of tourism. And I can say it loud and clear that tourism is the way if we really want to get it right in Nigeria. Tourism is the only way because we have the assets, we have the numbers, we have the figures. The only thing that we left behind is just to coordinate ourselves and make it our way of life. With what my brother and former colleague had said, let me start with Mr. Steve Ayorinde. He said, we've been having it consistently since 1999, and that is what has helped Lagos State Government to develop tourism to where we are today. And I think we're just changing the bat button and it's a continuous process. Everything that any of the past administration that have done, achieved, we don't go back to it, but to, we, we, we promote it and make it better. Those are the few things that we've been able to achieve in the ministry. With what Mr. Fadipe said about hospitality, having the data and classification in 2012. Yes, 2012 is eight years past. And what was done in 2012 will not be the same situation we are in 2020. So as a ministry, we are putting in place all our, uh, we are trying to register all the hospitality establishments in Lagos State, and not just to, to register them, but to classify them. We can see most of our hotel now and lounge, restaurant, but we do our self-classification. We are the ones that put ourselves into five star, and that does not encourage tourism. In tourism. We need to be sure that they actually have the standard of that classification. You go to the online to check the hotel, you see it five star, but when you check into the hotel, you see it as zero star. And that does not really encourage tourism. So we are putting all that together. And at the same time, we are trying to have a documentary of all the tourism attraction sites in Lagos State. And I can tell you in another one, two months, we are going to have that presentation of all the tourism attraction sites in the whole state, that none of them will be left behind. So wherever you are, anywhere you are in the world, you can check whenever I visit Lagos, and that is the way we are trying to domesticate tourism in Lagos State. You can actually see many people live in Lagos and they don't even know the tourism attraction site we are having in the state. I can tell you, even some of my colleagues in the cabinet will tell you I don't even know it's necessary. Like the museum that was shown by the man that went to Ikorodu. Many of us does not even believe we have museum, a zoological garden here in Lagos State. And those are the things we are trying to promote. Also, let me appreciate the stakeholders. They've been so awesome since my assumption of duty. They've been so supportive. They are the strong pillar because I will tell you, tourism is driven majorly by the private sector. We are only to regulate what the private sector needs to do. The government alone cannot stand to say, oh, I want to promote tourism. And the stakeholders in the industry, the FTAN coordinator, Lagos State most especially, has shown that he really wants to promote tourism because if they've not been part of what we are doing, we'll be working across each other. And that will not allow us to get to our destination easily. But with their support and collaboration, we've been able to go a longer distance compared to what we'll have been able to achieve alone as government. Like their inputs. Yes, the past administration put in the master plan. But as been said by one of the uh, panelists that it was E and Y which they believe they are not a tourism stakeholder or practitioner that put it together for state government, but doesn't really matter. We, don't, we cannot have the baby and throw it into the dustbin. What we now have is to call in the stakeholders and look at it together with the ministry. So the master plan has been reviewed and has been submitted by the, by the stakeholders to the ministry. So we are looking at it to present to Mr. Governor, and I can assure you with the Mr. Governor that I know that believes so much in the ministry and is a lover of tourism and entertainment, which is one of the key pillars of this administration team's agenda. We actually sign it off and immediately sign it off, become our Bible and Quran in the ministry. So whatever we want to do, we just continue to the implementation of that master plan. For another five, 10 years in Lagos State, I believe we are going to see the new tourism sector 
in Lagos State, and that will assist the nation to grow its GDP. Because when you grow tourism, you are growing more than just employment opportunity. Even our GDP will be grow along with tourism, and we are going to create so much wealth because we are going to create markets around all the tourism attraction sites that we are putting in place in Lagos State. We will not allow it to just stand on its own like the way it used to be in the past. When you have a tourism attraction site, the best you can achieve is to create a market site around that tourism attraction site. So whenever anybody comes around, it must be able to pick one thing or the other and circulate the words around it. With what Mr. Steve said about the possibility of second third waves in the pandemic, we are all seeing it and we are observing it as state government. Yes, with the presentation of my colleague, the Honorable Commissioner for Health, he has assured that the resistance we Lagosian put towards the pandemic, it's so strong that we should be rest assured that we might not likely in Lagos State, because you see our people in the market together, you see them everywhere in the buses together. So we might have been able to weaken the virus in Lagos State. So, but we are looking at international a uh, flight that has opened so they don't bring another strain of virus into the system but with what Lagos state government and federal government has put in place at our airport to ensure that everybody coming into nigeria as is test another second round of tests we believe they might have done their test before boarding their flight to Lagos state or any part of the country but we still insisted that immediately they land in Lagos state after seven days they must come up to have their second test and if they are positive, then we're going to do the, the right thing by isolation, by isolating them and, and the treatment will follow. So that gave us that a bit of rest of mind. But notwithstanding, we still realize that the pandemic is still very much around and we, like what we are having now, the hybrid version of whatever event the Lagos State government is doing. We can't say because we've weakened the virus, we've flattened the curve, now we should be able to cluster together like the way we used to do in the past. No, we still need to continue to maintain that social distancing till we have zero number in Nigeria, not only in Lagos State, till we have zero number and everybody that has been tested positive becomes negative. Then we can let loose everybody. But if we still have a single positive case of COVID-19, then that means it's still within us. But the day we have it zero number, which I believe will continue the way we've been doing, we will definitely have it at zero. So while we are still waiting for that zero number of COVID-19 positive case, we will continue to maintain what we are doing, the way we've been doing it. Like our Independence Day celebration, we're going to have it both physical and virtual. We, we believe everybody will participate and there's going to be so much fun. Like uh, Mr. Steve Ayorin, they said, it is a call for show. No dull moment in Lagos State. Whatever, we are too strong and we are resilient to so whatever form of situation we find ourselves, we still believe for better tomorrow. And I believe that we should continue to keep that very strong hope alive in whatever we are doing. Tomorrow will definitely be better if we have that positive mind. And I can, let me, on this note, appreciate our able and capable governor, Mr. Babajide Olushola Aduragbe Misanwoli. He has been a very wonderful leader, father that put everything in place to ensure that tourism in Lagos State does not suffer any form of setback, despite the situation we have found ourselves. Because at a point in time, all the focus of the government was on Ministry of Health, Health, Health. But I can tell you, whenever we get to him and tell him something about tourism, because immediately we have the first ease of lockdown, that is when he gave us approval to have the uh, pandemic review committee. And that has really assisted us to have to be where we are. Now it gave us an approval for the Tourism Development Fund to go and set it up, which is a good thing for the tourism sector stakeholders. So we can have... <laughs> and as well as having the Creative Academy, because we believe we need to train and retrain ourselves. What we are having today is not the, what we are having yesterday is not what we are having today. But the best we can achieve when we continue to unlearn, learn and relearn. So this creative academy stuff, Mr. Governor has put huge investment in this industry to ensure that our people are actually up to the task to develop 
creative industry in Lagos State. And as well, we have so many programs that Mr. Governor has actually approved. And before the end of the year, you see much more of the activity of the ministry. And with all the advice uh, they've given to us today, we look into it. We are having our websites as well in the ministry because we know the world has gone digital and we don't want to be left behind. Lagos State Government has the a state website with the Ministry of Information. But for the Ministry of Tourism, we said we cannot rely only on what information is, is, take, is, is putting out for the public. So we need to have one domicile in the Ministry of Tourism just to promote tourism and domesticate tourism in Lagos State. And the Ministry has have a plan to ensure that we have a tourism officer in all local governments of the state. So they'll be able to facilitate all the tourism attraction sites in those local governments. They'll be able to harness domestic tourism in the earliest time. Thank you so much for your time. We sincerely appreciate you. I wish each and every one of us happy World Tourism Day and happy birthday to Dr. Franklin. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Please, yeah, I like the round of applause. And you could see the energy and the passion she put into this. You know, when the tourism thing bites you, it bites you. And once you've caught the bug, it stays with you all your life. You came from a different place. The bug has beat you. And we know we have you for life, madam. <laughs> Thank you. And before we go to this, uh, somebody, Mr. Steve talked about tour guide. There is a tour guide that was supposed to join us. I see him on a boat now. So we have to go to him because these are the foundation of the whole business. Badagri is blessed that they have the best trained tour guides in Lagos. Most of the people who go there, there are three or four of them that can lead you through. But we need more for a state like this that is going. So can we put Anago on? Yeah, yeah, he was on a boat. So he can share with us because he's been teaching people in Ekpe. I've seen he's been doing some training. And I'm taking him to Abuja for uh, him and one guy from Cross River to teach people on a national level. So uh, is Anago on? Oh, because he's on water. So he go, okay, can we go to Fadikwe before we round up? When he I need Anago to talk to us today. So uh, can we go to, okay, Anago, please, can you share a little bit with us? I know you're on the boat. That's him. Network on water, I know, is usually unstable. Okay, let's go to Mr. Fadikwe so we can round up. I, I needed to hear from Anago, but let's go. Mr. Fadikwe, can you quickly round up? Hello. Okay, we can hear you now. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, let me also congratulate the Honorable Commissioner with that passion, the interest that she has shown. But before I say more, let me highlight what we have to do with tourism, particularly the, pot the potential we have on domestic tourism. This year, theme is uh, tourism and rural development. And in developing it, domestic tourism should be our target. Globally, in 2018, for instance, about 9 billion domestic tourism trip was recorded by the World Tourism Organization. But only 1.4 billion international tourists was recorded. You can see domestic tourism having more cloud even than international tourism. Then besides that, we need to also understand that countries like United States Okay, we can hear him. I think uh, it's not uh, it's his echo. So let's let's come to the permanent secretary here. 
So can we uh, come back to us? Okay, let me give you, sir, to thank everybody that joined us today and uh, pray for Lagos for implementation of all the visions that has been shared today. So I'll hand over. To God be the glory. Uh, today is a very, one of the happiest day for me. I spent not just, I mean, quite not a, a year in the, in the ministry, but I think uh, what is happening, what has been happening is a thing of joy to me because uh, I am part of the history. Um, on behalf of the government of Lagos State, led by the energetic uh, Mr. Governor, Mr. Babajiro Lishula Sanwolu, the Honorable Commissioner, the um, Special Advisor to the Governor, my brother, and the former Commissioner, Mr. Steve Ayorinde. I've heard a lot about him, but we are, we are meeting for the first time uh, physically. The Honorable um, Committee Chairman of uh, the Lagos House Assembly, Committee on Tourism, Art and Culture. The, my yoga, Mr. Ashimi. He was my yoga when I was in the local government. He was the secretary, permanent secretary at the local government um, commission. Then Mr. Fadikpe, my brother, my mentor, my mother, because um, when it comes to the tourism in Badagri, I think we started in 1993 when we formed the first uh, tourism committee in Lagos State. Uh, we've, been, we've, been, we've been on it for a very, very long time. Uh, Eftan, we want to really thank you, appreciate you for your steadfastness, for your support. And um, all I have been doing to make sure that uh, this ministry, this vision of teams agenda uh, shall come to pass, we appreciate you. All other speaker, speakers on this uh, event, we really appreciate your comments, your ideas, your suggestion. We are really thrilled by all that you have said. And I'm very sure that all this have been taken note of. We are going to work on it. Uh, but uh, let, me, let me also ship here, ship in here. One very, very fundamental thing that the, uh, the, um, the Honorable Commissioner has skipped her mind is the fact that the ministry, the, this leadership, identify a gap in the ministry. And that gap is the policy for Lagos tourism. I want to tell you here today that a draft policy for Lagos tourism is already ready for presentation to members of the stakeholders. Very soon we are going to do that. Then um, on tourism, the, the domestic tourism, I think that is the direction, the global direction now. And um, I want to advise my honorable commissioner that Lagos that you launch this with a workshop, local government workshop on domestic tourism in Lagos State. That, with that, I think you can start generating the necessary awareness. Honorable Commissioner Ma. <laughs> so um, on this note, I wouldn't want to say so much because a lot have been said, a lot of ideas have been uh, put forward. We all, all I need to do is just to thank you and I wish you well as individual we move to our various destination. Happy Tourism Day. Thank you all and thank God bless. Kabi, sister, very sorry that uh, you, I'm very sorry that we, I omitted you in my uh, vote of time because you've been very, very wonderful. You've been, you, your support, your, your country have been very, very, has been very, very tremendous. We, uh, on behalf of the commissioner and the entire ministry, I want to assure you that we continue to give, to give you support, work with you, and make sure that that dream, that vision, that lofty, idea that you have, you have projected this, this afternoon shall come to pass by the special grace of God. Thank you, Your, your Royal Highness.
Thank you. I, I think uh, as we are signing off, they are going to show some videos of Lagos so that people will see that Lagos is alive. People think the only destination that you have in Lagos is the people. There is something bigger than the people. So we start from the past and we take you to the present. So go ahead. An eclectic city that's rising to the world's attention. A place where tourism, arts and entertainment are etched at the heart of development and transformation. A model state that's expanding its possibilities of business and attracting global investment. A coastal city where tradition exists with modernity and innovation. A unique African city that sets the mark on all fronts. The birthplace and home to the globally renowned Nollywood industry. Global focus in contemporary theater, in our visual arts, in our culture, and our captivating music scene. A city that stands tall in pride and vibrance, providing a palatable and inclusive environment for all. Where do you go to discover a city with contrast? From traditional history to modern creativity, from cultural delights to golden sandy beaches. Where do you go to shop, visit museums, art galleries, and party the night away? There's only one.
Passe pas si di police Gov no ambo de kofoshi Helicopter lo fo loki You cannot deny you no see Fata ke si la rote mi cha Omo ke si wo le ba Go du go pa go pe la rote mi cha It is you a drink cola or tell you what. It never finished. I love I don't get new motto. It never finished. It is a drink cola. Oh, you go. You go to a oh, you go. Oh, you go. Why are you speaking? Oh, you go. Oh, you go. You the Lagos, oh, you go. If I carry you go, you catch a my guy. You go love Lagos, oh. If I carry you go by that be my guy, you go love me go so If I carry you go to Lagos Island, you go love me go so Hey le jabo, hey le tiko, hey le baje no Central of excellence, le why in case you don't know Mi jaye, mi male, mi jaye, mi bele, mi jaye Baka kido basu mi malole My city, I'm not solely my city. I'm not made it in my city. I'm not God bless my city. I'm not. Oh, you go, you go, you go, you go, you go. Why are you speaking? Oh, you go, oh, you go, you go, you go, you go. Gigi. Fresh, 